In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. We are going to install Virtual Smart Zone on Microsoft Azure. I've already downloaded the necessary installation media from the Ruckus support portal. One item to note, the compressed file when downloaded is roughly two gigabytes. However, the uncompressed file is around 40 gigabytes. Because that file is so large, upload times can take quite a while, so I'd suggest you plan ahead for that. The first thing we need to do is create a resource group. I'll use the search bar and enter resource groups and select it. Now we click on add. I'll give the group a name of how to hub demo. For the region, we are using our Southeast Asia resource, so I'll have to add it here. This will obviously differ based on your requirements. Then we click on next. We won't add any tags here, but you can if you'd like. We'll click next again. Everything on a review screen looks good, so I'll click on create. Once the resource group is created, it can take a few minutes to appear in your list. You may need to click the refresh button a couple of times. I've opened our group just to show the details. Now we need to upload our image. I'll search for storage accounts, select it, and then click add. On this screen, I'll select our newly created resource group of How To Hub Demo. Now we will name it, however, it requires lowercase letters. Location, performance, and account kind are all fine with their defaults. For replication, I'll select LRS or locally redundant storage. Now we click next. The next few screens, our default settings are fine, so we will click next through them. Now we can review what we've configured and click Create. This step takes some time, but once completed, we can see our deployment is now complete. Now let's search for storage accounts and select it. I'll open our How To Hub demo storage account and select Configuration. This is a review, which everything is fine, but if we need to fine tune or make changes, we can do that here. Now, Let's open containers under block service and then add a container. We will give it a name and click create. Once created, we'll open it. Now we click upload and we can upload our uncompressed VHD file. I'll need to uncompress ours first, so I double click to extract it. Now it's in our subfolder, so we'll go back to Azure open the containing folder and select it to upload, then click Upload. This step took a few hours, so it's a good time to eat, work on some other tasks, and keep checking back on it. Now that our upload has completed, we are going to create our virtual network. Back to the search bar and search for a virtual network and select it. Once the page loads, we'll click on Add. Our subscription is pay-as-you-go, however yours may differ. Resource group is our how-to hub demo we created earlier. Interface name, seeing a trend yet, is how-to hub demo VN, which VN is for virtual network. Region is fine, so we select next. This page we will leave default, but note we are utilizing RFC 1918 or private IP address space of 10.8.0.0. We will be natting our instance later so that we can access it. If you need to make adjustments here, you can, but let's click Next. Under the Security tab, we will leave our default options alone and click Next. We will have to do some work with the firewall later, but I want to perform that separately. Again, we don't need tags, so we will click Next. Once validation is complete, we click on Create. Now, our deployment is underway, so we will just wait for it to complete. Now we will create network security groups by using our search bar and selecting network security groups. Then click add. We will select our same resource group and create a name following our same pattern of how to hub demo SG, SG for security group. Again, we aren't using tags, so we click next and then click on create. 
Once again, our deployment is underway, so we'll just give it a few seconds to complete. While it does that, what we've just created is our firewall. I'll search for security groups again and select our newly created group. Once inside, we will need to update our inbound security, so I'll select it. We need to permit certain traffic to our new virtual smart zone so we can connect our access points to it and also manage it. I'll click on Add. Here, we want to allow any source address from any source port to connect to our destination on port 8080. Since we only have one destination within this security group, we are using any for our destination. This might be slightly different on your end. I'll refresh this page to ensure that our new rule shows up. Now that it's there, I can click Add again. We need to permit port 8443, so I'll add this rule just like the previous. This will allow us to reach the web UI of our new controller to manage it. I've gone ahead and added two more ports to our list, port 22 and port 21. Port 22 is for SSH and will allow us to directly access our controller via SSH, but also allow our access points to establish an SSH tunnel to the controller. Once you have your deployment built, I'd suggest you fine tune your firewall rules to allow only specific sources to reach your controller on these ports. It will be a much more secure environment if you do so. Now that we have our ports correctly added, we need to modify which protocol they are using since I omitted to do that initially. Instead of allowing both TCP and UDP ports, let's add only what we require. I'll enter our SSH rule and modify it to just TCP like I'm doing here. Once I've adjusted the port, we click Save. I'm not gonna modify each port since this is a demonstration and once we're done, honestly, we will delete it, but I wanted to show you how to do this. Now we need to create an image. Back to the search bar, we search and select images and click on Add. Let's give it a name of How To Hub Image and select our How To Hub Demo resource group. OS type needs to be Linux. Under Storage Blob, select Browse and select How To Hub Demo, which is where our storage container lives. Then select the container, then the VHD image, then click Select. Everything else looks great, so let's click on Create. Great, the image is now created, so let's click on it. Once inside, click on Create VM. Resource group is correct, so now we'll name it How To Hub Demo VM. Image is selected and correct. Under Size, we click Select Size. We need to select the appropriate VM size based on Virtual Smart Zone's installation requirements. The best match here is B4MS. This provides us with four virtual CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM. Now we click Select. Change authentication type to Password. I'll create a username and a password here. This password is not for Virtual Smart Zone or the management of that appliance, but for the image. So be sure to make this username and password something that fits your overall Azure management best practices. Note, under Public Inbound Ports, we are allowing selected ports. So let's drop the menu down and select the appropriate ports, then select Next. OS disk type, we will select standard hard disk drive and encryption type is fine as default, then next. Under NIC Network Security Group, be sure to select Advanced and then under Configure Network Security Group, drop that box down and select our created security group of How To Hub Demo SG, then click next. Management looks fine as default, so we click next again. Again, our defaults are fine, so click Next. We aren't using tags. Next again. We can review what we've just done. If we need to go back to make changes, we can, but ours looks good, so we click on Create and wait for our deployment to finalize. Our deployment is complete. Let's go to our VM. We will search for Virtual Machines and select that. We see our new VM here, so I click on it. We first need to allocate some disks to this VM. I'm going to click Stop on the VM. Once the VM is stopped, 
Our status will show stopped, deallocated. Now let's navigate to Disks in the sub-navigation menu and then click on Add Data Disk. From the drop-down, select Create Disk. We will name our disk How To Hub Demo Disk and under Size we will input 100 into Custom Disk Size, which matches our VSZ installation requirements. Encryption type is fine, then we click on Create. Now that our disk is created, I'll click on Save. Now let's navigate to Overview in the sub-navigation menu. Let's start our VM by clicking on Start. Once the VM starts, it will provide us with our public IP address. For security purposes, I've blurred it, but this is where it's located. We need to make a note of this IP address as it will be required to perform the setup on Virtual Smart Zone and also how we will manage our new appliance. Now let's SSH to our new appliance via its public IP address and get the initial setup steps completed. I have a terminal window open and will SSH to the IP. I'll log in using the default credentials of admin as the username and password. We can change this later. Now we enter enable, use admin as the password again, and type setup. In cloud platforms, we do not have a three interface setup for virtual smart zone, so we will be using high scale for our implementation. And yes, we are sure. Now we want to select IPv4 only and DHCP. Since this is a public appliance, we will just use 8.8.8.8 and 4.4.4.4 for our DNS servers. These servers are Google's, but work great for DNS. Now we enter Y to apply these settings and wait for the system to configure the network components. Once the apply is complete, we are asked to accept the settings, so we type Y for yes. We are done with the CLI aspect of this portion. Now let's hop back into our browser and finish setting up our new appliance. The beauty of Virtual Smart Zone is that no matter what platform you install it on, the setup wizard looks the same per version. We want to configure a new cluster, give the cluster and controller a name, and we can also add a description. One item we need to include is that our controller is behind a NAT or network address translation. Since the controller is using private 10 dot address space, we need to enter our control NAT IP as the public IP address Azure has provided us. I've included that and blurred on it, then we click on next. Now let's secure our installation a little bit further by updating our admin and enable passwords. Once that's done, we click on Next, review the settings we've configured, and click on Finish. Our installation setup took roughly 32 minutes to complete. Now we can use the link provided on this page to access our new Virtual Smart Zone platform and ensure it's fully set up and ready. One item to note, once this step does complete, I like to let it sit for about five or 10 minutes. This gives Virtual Smart Zone time to let all the services start and come up online fully. We will go ahead and log in using our admin user and new password. Once logged in, we can see that our controller is up and online. The cluster is healthy and we see that we're running version 5.2. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.